So many Christian leaders and pastors have been getting in on this whole debate over whether or not, you know, should Christians attend LGBT weddings? Of course, this is all sparked by Alistair Begg and his advice to the grandmother about whether or not she should attend her grandchild's LGBT wedding ceremony. And you know what? There's been quite a divide on this issue. Some people are taking the position to defend Begg and, and back him up on everything. And it's just the clear idol worship of man is on display with that. But then others are calling him out. And even those who are his own friends. One of those individuals, Stephen Lawson. We're going to get into what he had to say as he addressed this in a Sunday sermon in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you in the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you, as always, we walk by faith, not by sight. And for someone like me, well, it's kind of my only option. I remind you guys as well, if you enjoy and appreciate the work I do here, why not consider blessing my ministry with a generous donation? I could really use your help. There's a couple different ways you could do it. One easy way, just click the super thanks button down below on this video here. That is how you can tip me with a one-time donation of any amount. Whatever you can contribute, it helps and adds up. It really doesn't matter how small or how big or become a premium member of Not By Sight News. You can join my Patreon today for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash Not By Sight News, link in the description. When you join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. I always take care of the Patreon members first. You also get exclusive links to these topics that we discussed. I include them up on Patreon, the way things are getting with YT now. I don't wanna take any chances of putting links in there they don't like, so it'll be for you on Patreon. Also there, comment censorship free on all videos. And you could even send me DMs. So check it out again. It's patreon.com slash not by site news. A link in the description. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So again, I want to point out that Stephen Lawson and Alistair Begg are friends. They have shared the stage together at a number of different conferences over the years. You know, they're both very similar in age. You know, they're, they're both in their early 70s here. Big difference, though, is that one is willing to stand for true biblical doctrine, sound doctrine, and the other one has now caved to compromise all in the name of compassion. And on Sunday, February 4th at Trinity Bible Church, Dallas, Stephen Lawson addressed these very comments by Begg. Now, I also want to point out here that both Lawson and Begg were scheduled to speak at John MacArthur's Shepherds Conference. And that by now, of course, we know the news that Begg has been dropped from that conference after he had a conversation with MacArthur and they both determined that, well, this whole thing has been an unnecessary distraction and having him at the Shepherds Conference would not be in the best interest of everybody there. And so Begg will not be there. However, Stephen Lawson will be there. And during his sermon, and I want to point out that he did not specifically mention Begg by name at any point. However, we know that that's exactly who he was talking about in this sermon because he talked about, it. he said, you know, there's been a lot of talk recently about whether or not Christians should not only attend LGBT weddings, but also bring a gift. If you remember, those are the exact words that Begg had used to this grandmother. Not only should you attend, but you should bring a gift as well because you don't want to appear to be judgmental or critical. And Lawson highlighted that. He says, because, you know, again, should you, you know, you should attend the wedding, bring a gift because you don't want to be, you know, judgmental or critical. He said all of that. Again, didn't have to drop beg by name, but you want to talk about a, a blistering rebuke. That is exactly what Stephen Lawson did. Of course, he's got over 30 books that are out there. You know, he's involved in multiple other, you know, ministries. So this stance that he took, for sound doctrine should be commended. And what he did here, as he told the story of John the Baptist in Luke, and he talked about how John was, you know, always willing to call out sin where it was because it should have ultimately led to repentance. But what happened with that? If you remember when he called out Herod for his own sin, what did Herod do? He locked John in jail, right? And instead of, you know, John the Baptist pointing out to Herod, you know, you should be repenting for this, you know, marriage that you're in. No, Herod threw him in jail, tried to silence him, and tried to get John to repent for even daring to call him out for his own sin. 
huge deal there because we hear so many Christians talk about how, you know, oh, he who be without sin cast the first. You twist these scriptures so many times. And this is what Pastor Stephen Lawson was referencing here throughout the sermon. And that sometimes you're going to have to be willing to stand for truth, even if you're going to be hated for it. Now, as he continued to go on here in the sermon and talking about specifically the whole LGBT marriage thing, he's like, should Christians attend? He said, absolutely no. He even took it a step further than that. He said, you would dare to celebrate such a union. He said, this is blasphemous. It's an abomination. It should be, in his words, repudiated instead of celebrate it. And no matter what you think that you're doing, if you're being loving and compassionate, your attendance at such an event is 100% affirmation without question. See, again, you have to be willing to stand strong in these last days. Because when your emotions and all these other things get brought into it, it's going to cause you to compromise. And Lawson continued on by saying that usually one sin leads to like 20 more. This is something that I've been talking about as well, about how when you crack the door of compromise open just a little bit, what happens is that Satan comes in and he kicks the door wide open. And then that enables you to go ahead and start caving to other matters as well. You'll always have an excuse. That's the thing. You'll always use the word compassion or love and you, you'll use these words and you'll weaponize them to try and advance your own agenda. And that's truly sad. For Stephen Lawson to call this all out, again, he should be absolutely commended. And Beg is his friend. And look, there's a lot of people that are friends with Beg that I am sure that, you know, didn't want to ruffle any feathers, didn't want to call him out. So good on Stephen Lawson for doing that. I don't give any sort of an endorsement to any pastor. I only endorse Jesus. I mean, I know there's people that there's things with Lawson that people don't like. But when it comes to at least this one issue right here, he should be commended for coming out and saying what he did, despite the fact that he has a friendship with Beg. And also what's truly sad is the fact that, you know, Beg has all of these leaders, you know, like, like MacArthur and others and that, you know, and Lawson that have, I'm sure spoke with him. We know MacArthur did. I'm sure Lawson did as well, you know, behind the scenes. And he's still refusing to repent. Shows pride, shows arrogance, and that is something that if he doesn't deal with it while he's still here, he will have to deal with it when he goes before the Lord. Because look what it has done. Somebody who was respected as a sound biblical teacher, all of these Christians are now asking questions. Oh my, is it okay? Maybe I mean, if Alistair Begg says it's okay, then I guess I can go. The problem with that is that you rely too much on the pastor, and you rely less on your own ability to read God's word for what it says. Are pastors good? Yes. We, you know, God bless the good ones out there. But at the same time, you cannot allow yourself to have your ears tickled by these individuals just because they wear a title, just because they preach sound doctrine in the past. It doesn't mean that we should now give them a pass because, oh, well, they just made a little error or whatever. No, 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 no. The Bible is clear that many are going to fall away from the faith in the last days. Is God saying in the scripture, but, you know, it's okay because they preached so good, you know, 10, 15 years ago, even five years ago, whatever the case. So we'll just give him a pass. No, no. You have to be able to really discern the scriptures for yourself, regardless of your pastor, whoever it is that you listen to. Listen to the Holy Spirit. That's the voice you should be listening to. All right. I want to hear from you. What do you think about Stephen Lawson's comments here? Do you agree with him on his, you know, calling out Beg? Again, didn't mention him by name, but didn't have to. We know exactly who he was referencing here in his message. Maybe you're somebody that attends Trinity Bible Church there in Dallas and you'd like to speak up. Maybe you were in attendance for the sermon. Let us know your thoughts. What I want to do right now something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. Of course, I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you guys up to speed on everything else going on. I do it because, yes, we're in the last days, really the final hours, and Jesus is coming soon. For anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to do so, 
I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again a child of God, you will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash not by site news link in the description, or just hit the super thanks button down below on this YT video here where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk. Be soon.